in our travels up and down the riverbank, I noticed that this sort of thing happened uh, occasionally and it looked pretty good. So a tree has naturally fallen down on an eroding bend on the outside of a bend. It stayed in place. It's trapped some silt. It gave me the idea of soft revetments, laying the, the trees down in the water. Of course, when you lay a hedge, you lay everything up uphill. So all the sap rises up into the leaves and into the growing plants of the trees. We laid it all downhill. Um, and everybody told us the, the trees would die, the hazels would die. And I was quite worried for a whole season that I'd killed all these trees. Anyway, lo and behold, we came back in the spring and it was a wall of vegetation. So this is a denuded bank. There's no cover, no habitat for, for fishing in real terms. Um, and there's some ideal willow trees that can be pleached down to provide instant cover uh, in stream and bankside cover for fish, invertebrates, nesting birds, small mammals, otters, anything that might use the, the river corridor. Um, you can see one has naturally fallen into the river, um, but it's quite bare, quite denuded of, of branches and things like that but it, it is a natural phenomenon. We're just going to enhance it and do it bigger and better uh, to provide instant cover for fish and bank protection. So our plan is to start at the tail end, start downstream, your furthest, furthest tree downstream, and to pleat it in and come up, up the bank and lay in other branches on top of it like fish scales so that the, the tops of one branch is protecting the butt of another branch and you do that all the way up to the top, but you've obviously got to start at your furthest point. You don't want to sever the trees. You need the trees to be attached to the stumps, A, so that they, they continue growing. This is a living structure um, and you don't have lots of bodies to get rid of. If you start cutting branches off and cutting big bits off, you've got something to deal with in the field. You've got to get rid of those. So the more that you can incorporate into the revetment, uh, there's more to grow and there's less to deal with. You don't have such aftermath to deal with. So any bits you have to cut off that are too big, the wrong shape, you wedge those in under uh, and the next tree comes across on top of those and holds them in. They can root, they can grow and it produces a much denser structure that will survive floods and provide instant cover for fish and protect the bank. Now there are certain consents that you need in place to do work like this on a triple SI, special site of scientific interest, or a special area of conservation, an SAC. First of all, you need the landowner's permission because they own the land, and if they don't want you to do it, you, you can't even get started. Secondly, because this is a protected site, what we're doing is a potentially damaging operation. So we have to get permission from the regulation authority legislation, which is Natural Resources Wales on this occasion. It could be Natural England, could be the Environment Agency in, in England. We're in Wales, so it's Natural Resources Wales. So you've got the farmer's consent. Then you have to ask for, it's called a Section 28 consent, potentially damaging operation on a, a triple SI or an SAC. So the potentially damaging operation we could be doing is disturbing nesting birds, cutting down trees that might have bats in them. We could be destroying an otter holt we could be disturbing spawning fish. Those are just a few of the simple um, potentially damaged operations we could be doing. This um, <clears throat> has been consented by NRW. We've checked it out for bats. We've checked it out for otters. We're in stream before October the 17th, which is the embargo period for spawning salmonids. We can't be in the river when they're lay laying their eggs. The farmer has already done the hard work and fenced it off because you wouldn't want stock grazing the coppice stools. Any pleached in timber is like a magnet for animals and they'll go and graze it all off, poach it out, and it won't work. So the farmer's put a new fence up. He's restocked with um, silver birch and native alder, so that's all good. Now we just need to protect the bank and give it some enhanced protection with the right consents in place. One other consideration you have to be mindful of when you're working in these triple SI and special areas is the native flora and fauna. 
Um, we could bring all sorts of diseases, invasive species, everything on our feet, on our wet weather gear. So biosecurity is, is premium in your mind when you're working on these sites. So disinfect, clean, dry all your equipment, uh, clean the, the, the cleats of your boots so that there's no seeds from like Himalayan balsam or giant hogweed, anything like that, before you enter the, the water or the triple SI boundary. You have to be biosecure. <laughs>